um, as we evolved, at some point in time, we had tribes, right? Yeah. So in order to maintain survival, you needed to be accepted by your tribe. So being accepted by people was a survival tool that was programmed into our mindset, right? So that neighbor at one point in time might have been someone you needed to survive. But Absolutely. we don't need that shit anymore, and we still have the brains um, you know, of that mindset. And I, I believe they call it scarcity mindset. Scarcity mindset, yeah. So um, – Moving forward, I think a lot of the millionaires and the people that are successful in the world, and it's a, it's a hard transformation. Like, change takes time. It doesn't happen yes. overnight. Yeah, I mean, I know Tony says he can do it in the fucking snap of a finger, but I, I still think it takes time. Um, but to get to that level, you need to do sort of work on the gratitude mindset and give as much as you can. I mean, that doesn't mean not to be selfish. You've got to take care of you. You've got to eat properly. You've got to exercise. You've got to take care of you. Yeah. But you should also be aiming on giving as much as you can. And the shitty thing about the way that society is built today, a lot of it is take, take, take. And uh, that's not going to get you... Well, it might get you rich. Let's face it. If you step on enough toes, it might get you rich. But it's not going to make you happy. You're no. not going to get a sense of fulfillment. Yeah, you'll succeed, but you won't be fulfilled. And you, yeah, you got to wake up every day with an attitude of gratitude for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you really have to have that sense of giving, and you know, and you got to pay it forward. You got to want to help other people. Yeah, you know, sure. I mean, that's that's a huge part of, of getting ahead is helping other people and getting out of your own way, you know, yeah. like going back to the business again, I, I realized fairly early, you know, to try to, you know, you'll succeed, not be fulfilled. But when you start helping others, you realize, wow, I can take what I've learned, get out of my own way and help them. Yeah. And that's going to benefit me. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's and passing on knowledge, something feels good about passing on the things that you learn. I know yeah. that this past year without drinking, I've read more books than I've ever read in my life. And that's huge. In a year, you know? Yeah. And uh, and passing on that uh, that knowledge, or what I at least took from it, um, there's a sense of satisfaction there. You like to, to tell that to people, right? Yeah. So I understand all of that, really. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, like, you've come up such a, a long way from <laughs> the mindset that you had as a drug dealer to the yeah. mindset that you have now. I think, like, obviously I'm proud of you. I think that your family is probably proud. Most of them are proud of you. And a lot of the people that are in your life are probably much better people. No offense to the ones that are still in your life that are in their sh shady ways. But <laughs> I'm not saying they're bad people. Sometimes no. people fall into things that they just have a tough time getting out of. It's true. It's true. Um, let's talk about how, I mean, it's called sex and suicide. Let's get into a little more of the relationship stuff and a little bit of the sex all right yeah so when you were when you were dealing and when you were living it up did you what kind of women were you finding you were attracting into your life oh my uh the type that were at clubs that uh dance on poles okay yeah. so lots of strippers were in your life there's a lot of strippers involved i mean there was um and we're hey they're, they're welcome on the show too i mean everybody loves absolutely sex and suicide yeah right? um i mean we, we, yeah, I mean, we would uh, we would all go out together, but uh, typically it would be yeah, strip joints and um, occasionally uh, some trips down to Montreal. Yeah, uh, things were, were, things were a little different there. You need their hands on in Montreal, right? Very hands on. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah, you some, can touch. Uh, yeah, there's 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 the type of doors that only open with the little sliding metal thing and a big giant man standing there to let you in. And there's a lot of women involved. Yeah. But um, again, a lot of things I'm not too proud of. But that was typically <laughs> the relationship status because I didn't trust anybody. Right. I didn't want anybody to get close. I wanted yeah. to keep my circle small. And uh, how many serious girlfriends have you had? Serious girlfriends? Um, three. Three. Yeah. Three very serious girlfriends. Three very serious girlfriends, and tell me sort of some of the circumstances. Uh, the first one was a high school sweetheart. Uh, yeah. We were together for four years, and um, we just uh, I wanted to do a lot of traveling, and, and you know we were young, and uh, we kind of went our separate ways, and we were really good friends, and actually uh, still. Very great friends. Yep. Good. Yep. That's cool. Yep. She liked that I was coming on the podcast today. So. Awesome. Yeah. No, she's a good friend of mine. She's Very actually, cool. She's traveling around the world right now. She bored my backpack. So yeah, we're, right we're really good friends. Really good friends. Well, that's a mature relationship. Thank you for giving us the thumbs up. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What about number two? Number two, uh, that was drug oriented. Okay. How so? Um, well, uh, that was when I was dealing a lot. So was she dependent on you for, for drugs? Um, not necessarily, but she knew where I hit it. Oh, really? Yeah, there'd be times I'd come home and uh, the whole place would be spotless and she's just running around like a mad woman. Really? Um, yeah. But, so she'd uh, get into it and clean the house? 
Was yeah, that her thing? Yeah, get into uh, the cocaine and, and kind of go on a, a clean spree. And then uh, when I get home, I'd want to do some with her. And it was just it was a just a drug orientated yeah. relationship, and it wasn't healthy. And that got me into a lot of troubles with hydro, showing up late, not showing up, you know, coming yeah. back from clubs, not waking up for work, and then locking my keys in the car, having to smash the window out before. I've done that too. Yeah, like just. And you, your boss is looking at you like, man, you're making a lot of bad decisions. Pull your head out of your ass. Yeah. Smarten up. And you're just like, whatever. I know. You have that fucking chip on your shoulder, yeah, right? Where it's just like, oh, you don't know me. Yeah, you don't know. You yeah. Don't know. And really, they do, they though, do, I think. They do, and they're it's trying like, to help you. It's yeah. Like, yeah, literally, I should pull my head out of my own ass. I look back, I'm like, fuck, someone should have kicked it right out of there. Yeah, no kidding. I think, that, I think that I've had a lot of people that have sort of been really good employers that have noticed when I've been off, and they I don't think they realized that it was sort of anxiety, depression um, based. I think that they actually thought I had a drinking or drug problem at, at times because yeah. that's what I did on weekends, and I just didn't have an off switch. Yeah. So there'd be times when they just thought, okay, well, this is what he's up to, this is what he's up to. And a lot of the time, the reason why I would do that is because when you go through a phase of depression – um, and you and I were talking about this earlier. Yeah. When you are depressed, there's no real reason for it. It comes in and it, and it just kind of sits on you. Yeah. It's just like a heavy weight where you can't move out of bed for sometimes weeks at a time. If I went and drank and did a bunch of blow, at least I wasn't sleeping my life away. Yeah. But also I had a reason to feel like shit the next day. I would be hungover. I would be fucking half dead, sweating and stinking like shit. Yeah. But at least I knew the reason for it. It was a lot less scary than knowing why I feel like shit for no fucking reason at yeah. all. Yeah. Right? So that's kind of what happened with me. But it sounds like you had some people that took an interest in you that tried to help too, but they don't want to overstep their bounds at the same time. Mm-hmm. And when it's time to let go, it's time to let go. And yeah. I think that I've learned a million different lessons um, in that time period. I mean, I'm pretty open and honest about anxiety and depression and mental health issues, which may or may not affect any kind of future employer. I may or may not. Ha- I don't. I think I'll always be self employed from this point forward, so I think I'll be okay. Yeah. yeah but yeah. Um, regardless, I think that I hope that it's um, a respect level rather than a look down on sort of like a, a disability. But yeah. have you, have you ever? I mean, have you ever experienced anything like that? Like any kind of. Um, when you were going through these phases, and I know you've had some rough days too. Absolutely. Did you ever think of, like, I know suicide's a kind of a, a loaded word, but was there ever yeah. times, and I think that everybody's kind of, when they've been in a rough spot, thought about it at times briefly. I don't think you can help it. I think that, no. no but, yeah, I, no, yeah, I, sorry, tell me about that. Go you. ahead. Yeah. I, I've, I've dealt with anxiety and depression my entire life too, off and on. Um, yeah. Big time when I was young, um, I had a seizure due to some medication I was on. My mom, really? My mom was battling with it with me because she was the one that was taking me back for the doctors all the time. And uh, I got into drugs at a young age too, yeah. right? So I, I Do you know, think that was part of it? Um, I always am curious well, about this. When I, when I was really young, like I was in grade grade nine, and that's when mushrooms were a big hit. Nobody could get them, and somehow I had a link on them. Yeah, I, that I was, happened in my high school too, man. My best friend all of a sudden became a fucking mushroom dealer overnight, yeah. and, and kids were doing mushrooms in like grade nine, grade ten. <laughs> yeah. I was always afraid to because I knew my mind was fucked as it was. I didn't need to hallucinate on top of it, right? <laughs> yeah. But um, I think I tried mushrooms a few times. But continue with your story. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, battle with it off and on. And, and yeah, it, it definitely, it. I mean, you kind of look at it as a release. I mean, for me, it was more of a release and I would do the drugs, but then I'd be sitting there and it'd be a work night and I would just do them and do them and do them. And then I'd stay up and it'd be to the point where if I try to go to bed, I'm going to miss work and yeah. I'll just keep going and I'll go to work and I'll just be a completely useless tit. Yeah. And I come home and you're so depressed and you're just like, what am I doing? Yeah. And you go, I'd go in phases and then I'd kind of turn it around and yeah, I'd think about suicide. Yeah. I thought about it a lot. I mean, yeah. I, I, there's still times where it crosses my mind, but I'm like, why? And I just, it's like, why would I even think that you got so much to live for? And yeah. you know what I mean? There's so many misnomers around this depression that I'm not aware of. I'm mm-hmm. not a doctor, you know, maybe there is a medication I should be on. You should be on, who maybe. knows, you know, maybe I'm, I'm not about the medication. I'm about a good, healthy living and, Same and, with me. and doing what makes you happy. Yeah. You know, it's not necessarily chasing the almighty dollar. Cause that's going to frustrate the hell out of you. But if you do what you like and you, you love it, the and money you're, will you're come passionate about it. Yeah. And you help the money people. Will come. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, and your reward is giving back. And, mm-hmm. and that's your celebration to what you're learning along the way. You're yeah. gonna be happy, yeah. And and then those those feelings of anxiety and depression are slowly gonna go away. But yeah. I mean, anxiety and panic attacks to me at times 
Some, they're crippling, eh? They're, they can be crippling. They can be crippling. Where, like you said, it's like a weight on your chest. There's times I couldn't breathe. I couldn't see yeah. straight. The vision, like I could, people be like, "Are you all right?" I could hardly hear them. Yeah, like a lot of you go through a lot of mixed emotions. You for do, sure, yeah, for especially sure. if you, you don't got, know what it is. Yeah, and you got nobody to lean on to. Yeah, or you're afraid to lean on people. You know, I'm a very, I'm a Type A personality. I got to win at all costs. Yeah. You know? So I don't open up too much. So for me to to kind of you know learn about my my inner self and be able to open up and yeah. talk freely about it, that helps helps me pay it forward because yeah. there's people out there that don't want to talk about it they need to yeah 100 they're going to bottle up and they're going to blow up on the launch pad and that's when that thought may actually become a reality i mean yeah. like you said I, I think everybody thinks about it more than once in their life at I least so. once in their life but doing it committing it and, and thinking about it are two very very different things they are and and, and i agree with you 100 percent. i think that uh Thoughts come and go, and they're just thoughts. It yeah. doesn't define the person that you are. No. It's just, you know, they'll, they'll come and go just like bad weather systems. Um, the thing about suicide, and the reason why, so there's a lot of new people on our sex and suicide, and we appreciate you guys supporting. But for those of you that don't understand why suicide is right there and right in our face, um, there used to be, it used to be thought that by, by suggesting or, or talking to you, I mean, if you were depressed and I brought up the word suicide, it might be a way to suggest that, like, give you that option and give you an idea. Yeah. Right? But we know now that that's a complete fucking myth. The way to get people to um, to talk and open up and ask them about, are you having suicidal thoughts? This is the way to prevent it. So by it being right there and in your face, we're not encouraging suicide by any means. This is not something that we want to encourage. But right now, it's such a loaded word that we need to just focus, shine a spotlight on it and just think like, okay, if someone's depressed, this is a problem. Every 40 seconds in the world, someone is taking their own life and that's a yeah. big fucking deal. That's that's a huge deal. And I, and I apologize to some of the people that I've tried to get on the show to, to share this story. Sometimes I, I understand I might come on and be a little more um, pressure, like, come on, share your story. It's going to help. It's because I know that statistic. I know that every 40 seconds someone is doing this and the problem's actually getting worse. So... Uh, I appreciate you opening up and being honest about that. Yeah. Um, Everybody's story is unique. And, and it is. You know what? I mean, if there's some people that give pressure and push back on you, keep doing what you're doing, man, because the, you need to do what you're, do, you're doing. Thanks, buddy. I mean, we need more people to open up and address the issue. Because yeah. every 40 seconds, that's fucking crazy. It is fucking and, crazy. And everybody's story is a powerful story. Everybody yeah. has a story. If you don't think you have a story, that's a story in its own. Yeah. You know, you can't see the picture if you're stuck in the frame. Sure. Right? So, I like that yeah yeah i mean you gotta it, everybody's story is powerful yeah right? and, and you gotta open up you gotta embrace embrace change it's inevitable it is know? it's inevitable it is and i think that uh like you sharing that and everybody that comes on um they ultimately say after they're like man that feels so good and they want to share more. They're like, oh, but I didn't say this. I didn't say this. I forgot that. And they want to come back. <laughs> Absolutely. So so people that are out there that are afraid, I mean, right now, we're doing this out of London, Ontario right now. We're going to take this on the road in September. But if you live in London and you have a story and you want to talk about whether it's, um, I mean, recently we had someone come on and talk about her sexual abuse. If you want to talk about that, we're open to hearing your story. If you want to talk about some fun um, and just shoot the shit about some sexual stories, we're open to that too. If you want to come on and talk about anxiety, depression, drug use, drug dealing, anything that maybe you just want to get off your chest so you can move on in a positive way with the rest of your life, that's what we're here to provide for you. So please reach out and know that this is a support system where you can do that and you can feel comfortable doing that. Everybody makes mistakes. I'm the king of mistakes. Just fucking Google it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, don't worry. I have been there and Jordan and I both are on the same page that there is no such thing as failure. It's no. just a need to modify your approach and it learn is. a lesson. It is. I mean, it, fail, failure is just another lesson. It's another stepping stone. You know, it's temporary defeat. You know, you need to embrace those those failures and you need to embrace your your not embrace fear. You need to squash fear of sure. failure because it's crippling. You, yeah. You, it, w it won't motivate you to do anything, but you need to look it directly in the eyes and look more past what you're actually afraid of versus 
you should be more afraid of not doing what you're afraid of because your outcome is going to be so much worse. Time's right. going to pass you by. Right. There's 3,800, 200 seconds in the day, something like that. I'm probably a little off. That's all right. Very good. But, um, you, you only get them once. Yeah. And once that time's gone, you know, sitting around and being afraid of not doing what you know you should do to get what you want to do. Right. That, right. That's going to be, that's going to weigh heavier on you later and talking about anxiety and depression and then it'll really kick in a lot yeah. of times when I kind of get in those lulls and everybody does. Yep. That, that kind of lights a fire under my ass. And yeah. It's like, I, I know it's me. It's my inner conflict. Yeah. Something's holding me back. I'm afraid of something and I'll just go face it dead on to mm-hmm. kind of get myself out of that lull. And you feel a sense of relief. The yeah. The weight is lifted off your shoulders. And that's a very, 